Hello, welcome to Jason the Old Millennial. My name is Jason. Speaking here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. All right, we're in this video. I'm continuing my series, uh, my top 100 for your albums that I redid after I did my first uh, bunch. Anyways, this time I'm doing 10, in a, 10 at a time. Uh, we already covered 100 through 81 on my list. So on this video, we're going to do 80 through 71. Yeah, it felt like the last episode or last um, video I did on this. I mean, I hit some pretty big hit albums that are very high on people's lists. And it was weird. I had some of the biggest hits in that that bunch. Uh, this 10 I'm going to talk about, I feel like it's actually more of the underrated albums, like albums people don't talk about very much that I think need to be talked about more. And albums that I've kind of discovered for the first time actually recently and just really love them. And they already made my list after just uh, just listening to them like once or twice. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm excited to get into the list. We're going to hit the 60s, 70s, 80s. We're going to hit uh, new wave music. We're going to hit folk rock. We're going to hit folk music, you know, all kinds. We're going to hit good old 70s rock as well. So hope you enjoy this here on Jason the Old Millennial. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well here on a Saturday night. Well, quite a week. A lot happened. Um, uh, I went to KU Jayhawks basketball game last Monday. Uh, a lot of fun. Second time I've done that. Um, got to see them win. Then got to go home and see the Chiefs win in overtime. So uh, it's nice to see the Chiefs. My favorite football team is undefeated. And my favorite basketball team is undefeated right now. They're 2-0, but they're number one in the country as well. So it feels good to be a Kansas fan <laughs> and have two, two of my favorite teams be undefeated at the moment and be number one in their sport anyways also uh obviously we had an election i mean a lot man uh, luckily we got to see who won in the same night which was really nice not having to wait for weeks and weeks so that was a that was definitely a uh improvement from the last 2020 election um not to i'm gonna talk about a lot about that but yeah obviously that was uh i was up all night luckily i was at work so i was up all night anyways but i was up all night kind of you know looking at the what was going on anyways and um probably knew around one thirty. I feel like, or one in the morning, it felt like it was about one in the morning before I heard who won the election. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, so let's get to my next 10 um, albums, um, starting with number 80 on my list. And funny, last uh, album I talked about was Highway 61 Revisited was number 81 on my list. And now we're getting to another Bob Dylan album. It's actually my favorite Bob Dylan album. And that is Another Side of Bob Dylan, which came out in 64. Um, might be a surprise because most people, it's High 161 Visited, it's Blonde on Blonde, are usually like the two big ones that everybody puts number one. Uh, yeah, so I might be surprised, and, you know, that I put this as my favorite. So I have three Bob Dylan albums, and I've talked about all three already. This is the third one out of three, because I talked about Blood and Tracks and Highway 61 Revisited. Um, very good. Um, yeah, I, I kind of love this era of Bob Dylan. Um, unfortunately, it didn't seem like it lasts very long. This, um, this is kind of the last of the... Uh, just straight on folk, just straight on acoustic guitar music where like every song is just Bob Dylan, acoustic guitar and harmonica. And that's it. Like there's really no backing band. And I don't know, I just kind of love that. Um, that style of his, I think really works. Um, it's very minimal, you know, uh, like I said, pretty much the next album, I think Taiwan 6400 visited, uh, I believe or bring it on home. Uh, I know he does in the next, next year in 65, and I think somewhere on there, anyways, and he goes electric, of course, and that was a big kind of controversy that uh, this, you know, folk legend is now going electric and he turns back on folk music, uh, but still really good. He kind of went more folk rock with that album and some of his other albums, which really work, I think, but um, it really works just as straight on folk music. Though, from what I researched, like this one kind of was a little bit of a changing from the last one, which actually was, I've been mean, listening to 1964 lately, and his other album, uh, The Times They Are Changing, is also a really good album that I really enjoy as well. Uh, it might be going, might be creeping up my list of favorite Bob Dylan albums. Uh, Free Will and Bob Dylan came out the year before. It was okay. It had a couple, you know, really good songs on that one as well. Um, but yeah, this is kind of, kind of transitioning from his just straight on just protest folk music to more poppy folk music, I think, and um, a little more commercial sounding songs, I would say. Some of them, some still aren't actually, to be honest. But uh, so he definitely was trying to make a song that I, I mean, an album that I think 
would appeal more to the general audience with this one. And yeah, I, again, really, really enjoy this one. Um, yeah, it's some pretty good songs here. It starts with All I Really Want to Do, which is a pretty good, uh, I've, I've seen, um, uh, covered actually a couple of times. Uh, the big one I think is uh, the bird suit on their first album, I believe. And the bird's cover is really, really good. I've also heard the McCoys, um, do a really good version of this. And recently I just heard, uh, Sonny and Cher, I think, do a, a version of this as well. Um, that really worked. So, uh, really actually pretty good song. Bob Dylan's probably my least favorite version just because he has, he's done sing as well, but still, uh, overall pretty good melody and everything and pretty well known song. Um, Chimes of Freedom, another <clears throat> really excellent song on here that the Birds also do on their first album, and I love it on the Birds album as well. Um, but yeah, another excellent song from him. Uh, to Ramona is probably the big discovery on this album where I was like, man, this is a really good song that I never heard before. Uh, so really one of the, one of my favorite songs on the album, To Ramona, definitely want to check out. Um, the, the funny part is he has these two kind of more comical songs, which I wasn't expecting. I don't know if this is, uh, he does this sometimes, it's kind of his style, but I Shall Be Free, number 10. It's such a strange song, but I kind of like it. It's just, it's not really him singing, it's just him like, um, he says these certain statements, but I don't know, I found it kind of humorous, the statements that he was making. Uh, my favorite is, uh, he's talking about, I'm gonna go fight Cassius Clay, or something like that, which is Muhammad Ali, you know, but back then it was Cassius Clay. So he's talking about being in a boxing match with Cassius Clay, or something like that, which uh, I'm not doing it justice, but it was kind of funny because I'm like, of course, he'd get killed if he went up against Cassius Clay. But there's a lot of funny moments like that in that one. Uh, Motorcycle Nightmare is the other one, which is actually really just tells the story of this guy who, um, I don't know if he wrecks his motorcycle or he, he, his motorcycle's not working. And so he comes across this farm and he needs help. And the farmer says, yeah, if you want to help around the farm or something like that, then um, we'll help you out or something. I don't know. And so he tells this whole story about this guy who's very liberal. What's funny is the guy, the motorcycle guy, very liberal. The farmer's very conservative. And so he wants to get out of the situation. And so he starts um, saying very liberal stuff. And the farmer, I think, takes out a gun and tries to shoot him. And so it's very funny. The whole storytelling is actually really funny. Um, so de definitely different type of stuff for him. Not as normal folk music, just really storytelling. But... Um, and then my two favorite songs on here, and two songs are probably my top 10 favorite Bob Dylan songs. That's why I love this album so much, is um, It Ain't Me, Babe is amazing. Oh my gosh, what an amazing kind of song about uh, telling your loved one that, you know, you're looking for somebody to, you know, just worship the ground you walk on. It ain't me, babe. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be that guy. Uh, really great song. Um, and then my back pages. Yeah, definitely like top 10, top five uh bob dylan song i love that i'm <clears throat> i love that line of um um i'm old i uh the uh, not forgetting it but i'm younger than that now i know it's part of the which is kind of he's talking about i'm now younger than i was which makes no sense but it's an interesting term to use during the song he uses it over and over uh, but i'm younger than that now uh but it's one of the songs is just man it just keeps going it's like there's really no chorus is just verse after verse and there's just tons of verses but uh just really cool lyrically just really well written um and just a really cool song i don't know it just really sounds great one of my favorite bob dylan songs but my back pages but yeah another side about dylan if you haven't checked it out check it out it's an underrated album in my opinion all right number there's only two albums i have on this list actually that i own so a lot of these i'm i won't i won't be able to show but I need to get at some point. But number 79 is American Pie by Don McLean. Came out in 1971. Um, kind of his, obviously, his biggest album that he came out with. And, of course, you know Don McLean from the song American Pie. is one of the biggest songs of the 70s period. I mean, I remember the first time hearing that song, just being blown away by it. Uh, it's kind of this fairly long epic song uh, with one of the best choruses of all time. Bye Bye, Miss American Pie. Drove the Chevy to the levee, but the levee's dry. The good old boys drink whiskey and rice singing, this will be the day I'll die. Oh, so fun to sing along to. Musically, though, amazing and uh, vocally and everything. Just one of the best written songs ever. Like, when you listen to the lyrics, you're just like, wow, what is going on? It's really cool how he paints a picture with that song. Of course, about the time that it's kind of about Buddy Holly and um, dying in 1959 of that plane, plane crash and everything. It's kind of the motivation for the song or you know, where he kind of got the idea. But yeah, that's obviously the big song on here. Really great. 
um, song that I actually like even more than that is Vincent. Vincent, man, I remember the first time I heard Vincent, I was like, I don't know if that was a big hit. I think it's really well known. If you know Don McLean, it's probably his, maybe the second biggest song uh, outside American Pie. Uh, but man, this song is one of the best acoustic ballad songs. And another just amazing uh, lyrically and sounds so beautiful. The, the guitar playing, uh, so good. And the a starry, starry night. Painting my something with something gray. Oh, sounds so amazing. And now we need to know what I'd say to you. Ah, oh, beautiful song. I love Vincent. One of my favorite songs of all time, to be honest. So that's what makes this, I had to put this on my list because you put American Pie and Vincent on the same album. I mean, come on. It's got to be a top 100 favorite album just for those two songs. Uh, besides that, those are the two big songs, I suppose, on the album. But uh, Everybody Loves Me is a really fun song where he's, very egotistical, you know, it's like, he says, everybody loves me, but why can't, you know, so I forget how it goes, but it's like, the chorus is like, everybody loves me, why can't you, or something like that, like, like, the person who wants to love him doesn't love him, but he's like, everybody loves me, I'm, you know, I'm very popular, you know, <laughs> uh, so I love the kind of the egotistical part of the song, or whatever. Also, Empty Chairs is a very beautiful song as well, but the whole album, very solid, kind of more folk album, I would say. Uh, and I love these folk music with the kiss guitar. This is one of the this is one of the best ones for me. So American Pie number seventy nine. I right, seventy eight. I have this album as well. And we got Steely Dan with Can't Buy a Thrill. Uh, this is the only Steely Dan album on my list. I'm afraid I'm not the biggest Steely Dan fan just because I'm not into their jazzier albums. I'm not a fan of jazz, so. The later they get on, the worse the albums are for me. Like, I'm not a fan of Aja and, and those albums that I know most Steely Dan fans love those albums. Those are always on the top 100 list. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not into this jazz fusion stuff. But this is their, of course, first album, uh, debut album anyways, that came out in 1972. So we're here in the early 70s again. And... Um, this album, I mean, it's much different. Like I said, they, this is not jazzy really at all. Maybe just a little bit with like Do It Again, but really it's not the jazz fusion type songs that they would be known for. Uh, this actually has more of a pop feel to it. That's why I love this album. It's the it's, it's the catchiest music that they've done in any of their albums. There's a lot of really great catchy, like more pop rock songs. And also some of the best harmonies, the best harmonies they've ever had on the albums. There's actually some really good harmonies on this album. And Seal of Dan's not known for the harmonies, really. That's not a thing that they do later on. But that's what I love about this album. It's like, man, if they could have kept this style, I would be the huge Steely Dan fan. Because I think the songs on this is so great. And this is a really great album. Like I said, these are, uh, it's, it's kind of the end of the, my 9 out of 10 albums. This gets a 9 out of 10. So it's it's getting up, we're getting up to the 9.5s here pretty soon. The next album, but... um. Yeah, uh, so it has some of my favorite songs on it, some of their biggest hits on this album. Uh, I, I almost would say it's like almost like greatest hits album in some senses. I don't know if they had a lot of great, great big hits, but any of the really big hits I think were on this album. Uh, like Do It Again, probably the, man, I want to say maybe the uh, song I've heard the most on the radio, I think, growing up. This was a definitely big, great hit. I'm not as big on this song, actually. It's an okay song. Um, it's a little more jazzier than I like, I, I think, but it's still okay. And what I like about this album is it, this is like, like in fact, I kind of like Katie Lied. I like um, Pretzel Logic. I think are actually decent albums. They would make my list. Like I said, this is the only one that made my top 100 list. I like those albums fine, though. And then after that, to me, the, um, the albums go downhill big time because uh, they go more into the jazz fusion. But what I like about these, the first, like, well, three of the first four albums is that it feels more like a band. Like they actually, you know, obviously Steely Dan really is a two, the core is these two guys, uh, Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. Becker plays a, a bass guitar, it looks like, and uh, Donald Fagan plays piano and also kind of the lead singer of the band. It does feel like more of like a band here. Later on, it feels like less of a band and just those two guys. Because basically by, I think, after Pretzel Logic or Katie Lied, they basically disbanded the band, said, you know, we don't need a band anymore. And and they stopped touring, too. They said, we're not going to tour anymore. We're not going to have a band anymore. We're just going to be us two, and we're just going to have a bunch of session musicians. And we're going to write all the music. And Donald Fagan's going to sing pretty much all the music, I believe, uh, mostly. And and everything else is just we're going to pick, you know, who we want on each album. So each album has different musicians on it, basically. 
It's a very weird way to go, but I love this because it does feel like a more complete band in a way. And and I say that to get to the my second favorite song on the album, Dirty Work. Oh my gosh, I love Dirty Work. It's such a great kind of pop song, I guess. And what I love about it is David Palmer. His voice is so good. I, it's funny, in my group, uh, me, Nick, and Jacob, we're not big Steely Van Dan fans, and we all kind of agree that a lot of it's because Don Fagan. We don't like Don Fagan's voice really all that much. We don't think he's a very good vocalist. Uh, out of all the major bands I've like listened to, he's one of my least vocalists. Uh, he just has a weird tone to his voice that I don't like. Uh, for the most part, some. I mean, again, I do like a lot of the Steely Dan. There's a lot of Steely Dan songs that I do really like, and he does a good job on. But I think that hurts a little bit. Uh, David Palmer. This is the only album David Palmer's on. He they they hired him to be uh, the vocalist because Don Fagan was too shy to sing uh, in in concert. So they got David Palmer so he can sing when they do tours in concert because uh, Don Fagan was too shy to do it or something. And then David Palmer quits after the, or they either, I think he quits basically after this because they basically said um, Don Fagan, they'd rather Don Fagan be the lead singer. So after they kind of said, Dave Palmer, you're no longer a lead singer of the band, he kind of quit. And I don't know what happened to him. He kind of disappeared, but uh, he only sings like, I think two songs on this album. And the big one is Dirty Work. His voice is so good. Like I'm thinking, man, if they would have kept David Palmer for the rest of the albums. I might be a bigger Steely Dan fan because I'd be like, yeah, I'm all for David Palmer's vocals. Really just nice and smooth. Uh, but yeah, and the again, great chorus, really catchy, great harmonies in that. I won't do your dirty work no more. Oh, amazing stuff. Uh, again, it's a big radio hit, so you probably heard that one. That's like I said, do it again, dirty work. And then the other really big hit, my favorite song on this album, favorite Tila Dan song, one of my favorite songs of all time. Really in the years, oh my gosh, that song is so good. The guitar playing is amazing. Um, they start with a guitar solo, basically. When it starts right away, you're like, oh my gosh, this guitar sounds so good. The tone of it, just the way it plays, it's amazing. And then there's a guitar solo in the middle too, that's really great. But man, it's some of the best guitar playing and just a guitar tone is so cool. I love the way it just sounds uh, when it comes in. And the, and Don Fagan, it's funny, he sings it really fast. It's, but I kind of like it how the verses go really fast. And then they get that chorus. That chorus is so good. It's some of the best harmonies I've ever heard. This is one of the best harmony songs. It's funny, this, like I said, Land's not known for harmonies, but it goes reeling in the years, bump a bump a time, something to the fears, something something mine. Oh my gosh, when they hit those uh, harmonies, it's amazing. Like, I wish they would have done that more. I would have been a bigger Steely Dan fan. Um, but yeah, those are like the three big hits off here, which are great. Like I said, three of some of the best songs that Steely Dan's ever done. But also some good um, stuff like Midnight Cruiser. Really great discovery. Another really great pop song with some great harmonies and very catchy chorus. Midnight Cruiser, really good song. And also, Only a Fool Would Say That. Another really catchy song. I uh, really like that one. But yeah. So yeah, some great stuff here. Some great harmonies, pop catchiness. Too bad they didn't do this more, because man, this is definitely a really good album. So Can't Buy Thrill, number 78. Number 77, we're going to uh, be the first of this band, and that is Fleetwood Mac by Fleetwood Mac. So this is Fleetwood Mac, the self-titled album from 1975. This is the first album that introduced Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks. And in my group, we were going through all of um, Fleetwood Mac's albums, and I actually didn't start until we got to the Lindsey Buckingham, Stevie Nicks era, because that's the era... I'm most familiar with. I, in fact, I didn't know there was a blues era, which was, I hate the blues era, which is so, it sounds so much different than this era. There's also this other era, um, Bob Welsh, I think his name is, <clears throat> kind of took over as lead singer and songwriter. And I'm not a fan of that era either, but I love this era of Fleetwood Mac. And I was never a big Fleetwood Mac fan until recently, until I was, my, the, my friends in my group, the Music Junkies group, I uh, started going through Fleetwood Mac, and then I, they let me come on with this album. This is the first time I got to review with the group. And it's, anyways, and I was like blown away by how much I enjoyed this album. This is the first album that's getting 9.5 out of 10 on my list. So uh, the next several, uh, you know, 20, 30 albums are going to be 9.5s. Um, so these are almost 10 out of 10 albums, really top of the notch albums. Uh, I should say cream of the crop type albums, anyways. But uh, yeah, and I just really love the, the Knicks and uh, Buckingham. Man, they added so much to the group. 
that's just a perfect combination of pop music. I mean, it's just really good pop rock music, what do you want to call it, uh, of the 70s into the 80s period. Musically, really great. Buckingham, great guitar playing as well. Uh, drumming is amazing, bass playing. So instrumentally, really good. I think the overall production sounds great. Like whoever's mixing and doing the sound or whatever is doing such a great job because it, it sounds great as an album overall. Um, and it comes up with some of their biggest hits yet at this point. They really didn't have any big hits up to this point. And then, like I said, I love Nick's. Stevie Nicks is my favorite singer in the group. I love her voice. She has an amazing voice. And like I said, they wrote some songs that they introduced here because they were a duo that got kind of recruited because they needed, uh, Bob Welsh left the band, so they needed a new guitar player and songwriter. And so they kind of got this package deal with Stevie Nicks and Buckingham. Man, what a great package deal. But yeah, uh, we get Rihanna, it's a huge hit. Uh, Stevie Nicks sounds so great on here. And this kind of shows you just how great they they added to the group and how much they added to it uh, with a song like that. Uh, sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, Stevie Nicks, great vocals here. Just overall great uh, music. Um, then you get, uh, what I love is that, yeah, Nicks, McVie, Christine McVie, and Lindsey Buckingham, all singer-songwriters. So, man, it's really cool. I love bands that have multiple singer-songwriters. I think it adds a lot to the group. And you have a variety of sounds there. Um, so, yeah, because you get Chris McVie, a really great song from her, Over My Head. Really super catchy, the over my head, over my head. Oh, super catchy, great vocals from Chris McVie. Again, Nixon and Vicky, or McVie really kill it on like these type of pop songs, super catchy pop songs and ballads. I love those two together. Um, Say You Love Me, another big hit off of here. Uh, really, really another good catchy pop song. That was a hit. And then my favorite song on the album, one of my favorite Fleetwood Mac songs of all time, Landslide. A really incredible ballad by Stevie Nicks that I believe she wrote and brought it to the group. She had wrote it before this album and then luckily got to do it on this album. But great songwriting. Uh, I love the acoustic guitar on here. It sounds so great. And Nicks, Stevie Nicks just kills it on vocals, you know. And it's a song about, you know, talking about getting older and, you know, uh, and like where the time, where has the time gone? All of a sudden you're getting older and you're like, where did the time go? Love that type of writing anyway. So absolutely excellent song. So yeah, this has some huge hits on it. Just a really great pop album. And this is the first of six. This is my first album and I've got six Fleetwood Mac albums. That's how much I really like Fleetwood Mac. And they're all from the Lindsey Buckingham, uh, Stevie Nicks era. They're pretty much every, almost every album they did, to, well, I would say like every, every album they did together is in my top 100. That's how much I really like them in the group anyways and how much I'm enjoying Fleetwood Mac. More than I did before. I never was a big Fleetwood Mac fan. Now I'm like, they're probably one of my top bands now. So yeah, Fleetwood Mac, the self-titled album, number 77 on my list. All right, number 76, we're going to introduce another uh, band that's going to have a lot of albums on my list. And this is the first one, and it's A Kind of Magic by Queen, which came out in 1986. This is another very underrated album by Queen. Like I said, this is, uh, again, I have... I think I have six Queen albums as well on my list, if I remember right, something like that. Five or six Queen albums on my list. And this is the, ranked the lowest, but still a 9.5. So that tells you how good these albums are. They're all 9.5 and 10 out of 10 albums by Queen. Uh, yeah, big fan of Queen. They're probably my second favorite band behind the Beatles. Uh, man, incredible discography. Everybody says Queen is a singles band. They don't have good albums. I disagree. I have like six albums on my list. I think they have a lot of amazing albums. Uh, not only the big hits, but the deep cuts are really good as well. And they just sound great. I mean, Freddie Mercury, probably the greatest rock singer of all time. Greatest frontman of all time. He sounds great on this record. And then, come on, May. Brian May is one of the best rock guitarists. I mean, he just rocks out on these guitar solos and riffs. And drumming and bass playing is also excellent. And they have a great sound to them. So don't sleep on Queen. If you haven't listened to Queen albums, yeah, listen to them. Because here, Kind of Magic... I don't think people ever talk about this album. This one kind of blew me away the last time I listened to it. And because I listened to it maybe before and was like not hooked on it. And then I listened again and I was like, oh man, this, this one's amazing rock album. I'd say it's mostly a rock, very rock oriented uh, album as most Queen albums are. Uh, but what's interesting about this album is the first half is just like a regular Queen album. Then the second half I want to say is... Um, Music from Highlander. Yeah, so if you ever seen Highlander, the original Highlander movie, 
uh, there's several songs that are on that soundtrack. So it's kind of like a soundtrack album to Highlander, the second half anyways. And I actually really love that. That's probably my favorite part of the album is the Highlander stuff. I think it was really good. But yeah, again, a lot of great rock songs in here. One Vision starts us off, great rock song. A Kind of Magic, the title song, another, all really great deep cuts, I'd say. There's no real big hits on here. There's all just great rock deep cuts. One Year Love, more of a ballad type, but again, Freddie Mercury, man, sings he can sing anything, and he kills it on that song as well. Friends Will Be Friends, another really nice rock, catchy rock song. Uh, and then we get into the Highlander stuff. Who Wants to Live Forever, so epic. I mean, the great harmonies in it, uh, the guitar playing, everything just, it just feels like this very epic song that belongs in a movie, so I love that. Give Me the Prize, another really cool rock song on here. And then we end with Princes of the Universe, is my favorite song on this album, and that, that chorus is so catchy. Here we are, Princes of the Universe, which I didn't know that was a Queen song. I remember hearing this going, oh yeah, I know that song from Highlander. That's when I realized this was Highlander, because I didn't even know that until I heard, got to Prince of the Universe. I go, wait a minute, isn't this Highlander? Like, I didn't know that was Queen. That's so cool to kind of discover, like, oh, gosh, Queen did Highlander. He, they did Flash Gordon as well, but um, we won't mention that album. But Prince but uh, Prince of the Universe, such a great song off of Highlander anyway. So, yeah, Kind of Magic, very underrated Queen's album, uh, made into my list at 76. All right, 75, we're going back to Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, we're talking about Fleetwood Mac again. And this is Tusk at number 75. Came out in 1979. Uh, this came right after, I believe, Rumors. Um, so it's like the third album they've done together with the the Buckingham Knicks uh, lineup uh, with everybody. Uh, this is a double album, and it's definitely more experimental than like Rumors or Fleetwood Mac or definitely just straight up pop music, I would say. Um it's funny, we did this, <laughs> we did a review on this. My friend Briar was not a fan of this, I think, because of all the experimentation, but I didn't mind it as much. I think there's some good stuff here. Mostly it's Buckingham. Buckingham decided, like, hey, I'm going to try to throw in a bunch of different stuff, experiment with the sound, you know, and do some crazy stuff on here. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. I think that's where it gets a lot of criticism is the Buckingham stuff isn't as great. But still, Nix and uh, McVie are still killing it on their songs. Uh, really good stuff from them. But man, there's still a lot of amazing songs on this album. And I've heard it's, most people I think like this album. And I remember getting to it, kind of get, coming with this feeling like, oh, I've already loved Fleetwood Mac and Rumors. And now we're getting to this album. So I'm like, will this live up to the hype? And yes, it did. I, again, 9.5 out of 10. Great Fleetwood Mac album. Still got some great pop songs and some good rock songs as well. Um, start with Over and Over, really great song. Uh, what I love is like McVie and Nix mostly come out with your nice ballad songs that are very beautiful, lovely sounding. And Buckingham comes out with more rocking songs. And I, I kind of like that variety of getting a good ballad, a good, nice, catchy pop song, a good rocker. Again, guitar playing is amazing. So I still think Buckingham did some good stuff here. But anyway, The Ledge is a nice rock song, I believe, from uh, Buckingham. Uh, Think About Me is a really great catchy pop song. Uh, Save Me a Place, another great pop song. Uh, Sarah, uh, absolutely amazing. Like I said, this, I, I really feel like, like I said, Nix is my favorite singer. And I see Nix really kills it on this album. Like to me, the first three albums that I've heard of her on, all amazing. And I think her songs are my favorite on there. Like I said, Landslide's my favorite on Fleetwood Mac. Uh, she, her, my like three favorite songs on this album are like all Stevie Nicks songs. Um, including Sarah. Sarah was like probably the biggest hit on here, I'd say. It was a pretty big hit for her. Great, you know, that's one you probably heard on the radio. Uh, amazing stuff by Stevie Nicks. Uh, what Makes You Think You're the One? I think is a really, it's actually, I think, my top five or close to my top five on the album. Uh, my favorite Buckingham song on here, and one of my favorite he's done. Uh, really catchy rock song from Buckingham. I really think it's underrated. Um, I love that. What Makes You Think You're the One? Really catchy stuff. Love that. Storms is actually my favorite song on the album. It's a, another Stevie Nicks ballad. Beautiful song. Never heard this before. It's a, probably the best discovery I had on this album. It's like, man, Storms, what an amazing Fleetwood Mac song I never knew existed. And like I said, Storm, Sarah. And then the other one I really love is Beautiful Child. Another incredible Stevie Nicks ballad. So these Stevie Nicks ballads are just killing it for me. And that's why I love this album. It's because of that stuff plus everything else. But Walk a Thin Line... Another just catchy song 
walk a thin line. Oh, that chorus, so good. And then we end with Tusk, the title song. It's such a cool experimental song that really works with the Say that you love me, do, 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 do. Like the overall sound is so cool and the drumming and the overall background music. It's a really cool song, uh, very different from everything else, but really works on this album. So yeah, number 75, we have Tusk. All right, now to number 74 on the list, uh, we have Buffalo Springfield again. <laughs> Uh, their second album, which they just added the again on it. It's coming out in 1967. I have two Buffalo Springfield albums on here. This is the, the first one, and I got another one actually much higher on the list. Uh, really, they only had three albums, too, so pretty good to have two of the three albums on my list. And uh, we went through this actually recently with um, uh, Nick from Townsend 505 and Briar from Briar's Music Showcase. We actually went through the whole discography, which is all three albums, and did a top ten and everything. Anyways, yeah, and this one kind of surprised me. I thought it was okay at first, but the more I listened to it, the more I was like, I really love the Buffalo Springfield sound. It's another, it's a kind of folk rock, though this second album is definitely more rock than folk. It, and it also adds a little country to it, too. So it's interesting. You get some folk rock music, you get some rock music, some um, some psychedelic rock music really in here. And then you also get some country rock kind of in here as well. So you get a couple of variety of styles on this album, actually. Uh, sounds actually a little bit different than the first album, but uh, still very excellent stuff. Because, again, what I love is you got Steve, um, Stephen Stills, um, Neil Young, and Richie Furre are kind of the three major singer-songwriters on the album. And all three do a great job. I love all three voices, too. I think they all three sing very well. They all three can write, of course. And so it's a really co great combination of those three singer-songwriters that makes this album really good. Uh, is kind of the first one as well, but really this one, because uh, Richie Furry actually didn't write any music on the first album, but he writes it on this one. But all three sing on both albums, though Neil Young was pretty upset of the first album because he only got to sing two songs that he wrote. And so this one, he, he gets a little more, I think, he gets to, write, he gets to sing all of his songs that he wrote, uh, but he's still upset over the first album, but definitely proves himself on this album. Because uh, we start with Mr. Soul, which is my favorite song on the album. What a great opener. It's Neil Young's song. It is an incredible rock song. That rock riff. Again, again, this is 67. We're getting a much heavier rock music. And you nothing like this. There's nothing like this uh, on the first album. I mean, this is incredible how hard rocking this uh, song is for the time being. But it has a lot of, you know, yeah, heavy guitar sound to it. But bomb, 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 bomb. Just a great rock riff that goes into that. Mr. Soul, I something to bum bum. I can't even think of the lyrics, but um, well, I love it. And Neil Young's voice, obviously, I love his voice, so it, it works really well. But it's a really incredible rock song, a great rock riff to it. And I love the after the like the first, and I love how he sings it, and then the guitar comes in, bow, bow, and it's this very heavy sound. And then the second verse, uh, Stephen Stills sings along with them. And I love that. They two, the two voices really gel together. Later on, they would, you know, be in Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. So uh, you're kind of seeing the basis of that here on this song, Mr. Soul. When those two sing together, oh my gosh, their voices sound so good. I love that they did that. Now that song kind of grows that way. And anyways, amazing song, Mr. Soul. But like I said, then we get Child's Claim to Fame, which is a Richie Furry song, which is more country. Richie Furry is more country sounding of a singer. So uh, Child's Claim to Fame is actually and I'm not a big country guy, but I enjoy some of his country stuff on here. But Charles Clinton claimed fame, really good kind of country uh, rock song. Uh, very catchy, works very well. Rich Furry, I think, is a really good singer. I like his voice as well, so it works really well. And then you get Every Days is a nice song by Stephen Stills. Expecting to Fly, uh, another Neil Young, uh, almost getting to more psychedelic style of music for him. Bluebird, great Stephen Steele song that, um, yeah, good rock song from him. And then Sad Memory, uh, another really great ballad from Richie Furre. So all three members have some great songs here that really make this album. So definitely, Buffalo Springfield, no one ever talks about them or their albums. And I got two of their albums in my top 100. I think they're a great folk rock group and it would have been great if they would have kept going, but they broke up after the, basically at the second album. They put a third album in and they basically were broken up by that point. So they never got to reach the heights I think they deserved, unfortunately. But yeah, so now we're at number 73. We're going to get to a Beatle with John Lennon. 
and this is Mind Games. They came out in 1973. This is my second favorite John Lennon album, actually. I got two John Lennon albums in my list. The other one, a bit higher, and you probably can guess what album that is. It was on my list last time. In fact, a lot of these, a lot of these albums weren't on my list last time. I'm trying to think. Um, uh, Can't Buy Thrill might have been on my list last time. American Pie was. Uh, but yeah, a lot of these weren't on my list last time, my top 100. So these are all kind of new new albums that made it in. But Mind Games is one that I was kind of, again, John Lennon, I, I recently went through all of his music. I went through all of his albums. Very hit or miss uh, solo Beatle, in my opinion. Uh, in fact, first, like, first two, great stuff. And then Sometime New York City, terrible this song's uh, this album's great, and then I didn't like Balls of Bridges, and then uh, his last albums could have been okay if Yoko Ono didn't sing on them, but Yoko Ono kind of ruined the, the albums, like the last two albums he did, unfortunately, and then his rocking uh, 50s rocker album was terrible as well, but yeah, Mind Games, though, a very underrated album, I feel like, in some ways. I mean, if you're a John Lynn fan, I suppose, or a Beatles fan, maybe you know about this album, but I feel like it's not one that's talked about as much as like Imagine or Plastic Ono Band or talked about more. But I, last time I heard this album, man, it really grew on me. And I was like, wow, this is a really great John Lennon album. Uh, again, 9.5 out of 10. Uh, really surprised me. I wasn't expecting much out of this album. And it raised, rose up to my second favorite Lennon album. It's on my top 100 now. But of course, the my favorite song is Mind Games. The self titled it's one of his best songs. It's like a top 10 John Lennon song. I love his vocals. Love the kind of orchestra music behind it. The overall sound is really good. Um, definitely has like that wall sound that I really like out of it. Uh, besides that, there's not any big hits here. Mind Games is the biggest one. A lot of good deep cuts though. I mean, One Day at a Time, that was really good. Uh, two other songs I really loved on this album. Uh, Bring On the Lucy, Free to People. Super catchy, great, super catchy chorus. A lot of, like, uh, a lot of voices singing there. Um, and also Out, Out the Blue is a really good song on this album that um, you might never heard of. Uh, another super catchy song from him. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I, I think John Lynn's vocals are killing it on this album. Also, musically, just really good. Just some really good backing music on this as well. Uh, all works. Uh, Intuition I thought was good and You Are Here. Um, but overall, great album. Those are some of the highlights for me, but... Yeah, another really, another or uh, yeah, great sounding John Lennon album. The first one I get to talk about on my list. Number seventy two. Um, now we're getting to new wave. Uh, one of my favorite new wave albums, and this is Heartbeat City by The Cars. It came out in nineteen eighty four. I have two Cars albums on my list. Uh, you probably know the first, the one that I have higher is the typical Cars album, but uh, it's Heartbeat City. Really good album. Really surprised me again. I didn't know anything about The Cars really except. I got introduced to their first albums a couple years ago and thought, wow, this is a really good album. I didn't know much about the cars uh, or the new way of sound. And then I went to the whole, I'm gonna do a deep dive on them uh, at some point because I've gone through the old discography and I come out saying, I really like the cars. Actually, they're a really good band. And I like uh, most of their albums I, I really quite enjoy. Uh, my top two though, are really good albums here, including this one, Heartbeat City, which, oh man, it could be number one. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's I mean, it's pretty close to the their debut albums being an amazing album. Overall, I just love the new wave sound on here. Uh, it's kind of quirky at times, but uh, love their overall yeah the singing, the the instrumentation, a lot of synth. If you like, uh, I guess if I describe their music, a lot of it's like a synth pop album as well. A lot of synthesizers used on this album. It's the eighties. So a lot of synths is used. So it has that 80s synth sound to it, but I actually quite enjoy it. I didn't realize I enjoyed it until I heard this album. I'm like, I do like this 80s synth, you know. But it starts with Hello again. I thought it was a really solid uh, opener here. And then Looking for Love. Like I said, uh, only has two big hits on this album. Everything else is great deep cuts. But man, there's almost not a bad song on this album. They're all actually pretty decent overall. Um, the big ones are Magic. Magic is so good. I, I didn't realize this was a car song. To heard the album and I go, oh, I think I've heard this song on the radio. I'm pretty sure this was a radio hit, but that chorus is so good. Oh, oh, it's magic when I'm with you. Uh, uh, is, is it okay? It's like whatever his voice is so kind of unique and quirky and I, I, I love it on this. But man, it's really super catchy pop song, magic. Really great stuff. And my favorite song on the album is Dry, which actually sounds a bit different than everything else. 
it's not really a new wave, you know, type song. It's just a really great ballad, just a straight off, straight up, just great 80s ballad. And it's a big hit on the radio. And I, again, I didn't realize this was a car song until I heard this. I was like, this is a car song, Drive? Like, I've heard this song many times on the radio. I love this song. I was like, that's so cool to discover, like, oh, that's a cool car song. Uh, and of course, it's funny because it's called Drive and the name of the band's called Cars. But, uh, but man, it is so good. The who's going to drive you home tonight? Oh, just beautiful song. Great uh, vocals. Yeah, it's an amazing song. Love Drive. Uh, but we got some other good ones like Stranger Eyes, It's Not the Night, and Why Can't I Have You? All great stuff. Um, all, just, yeah, definitely, if you don't know this album, definitely check it out. Heartbeat City. Really, really solid album from the Cars. At number 72. And so the last album I will talk about on my list at number 71 is uh, an album from The Loving Spoonful, Daydream, which came out in 1966. This is their second album. Uh, the first album, Do You Believe in Magic, that came out the same year, I believe. They, their first two albums came out this year, 1966. In my opinion, they're two best albums that I've heard from them. Uh, this is by far my favorite, though. I think it's even quite a bit. Like I said, this is 9.5. Uh, Do You Believe in Magic is more like an 8.5 album. Uh, it's got that really big hit on it. It's got a couple of really big hits on it. This also has a couple of big hits on it as well. Uh, overall, it has the best number of big hits. And I do love the Love and Spoonful sound. It's a great, I do love the folk rock era of the 60s like this. Uh, like I already had, you know, uh, Buffalo Springfield on here. And now I got uh, Love and Spoonful. Love the lead singer, John Sebastian. Has a great voice. And they're kind of a fun band. Um, they... And they can make a really great poppy, catchy pop song. They do a really good job with that. And some great backing vocals as well. But then they can also hit you with like a f kind of more fun, fast-paced song. They can even hit you with a bluesy song sometimes. And they do have these kind of more comical songs that I really love on the album as well. So they can hit you with a, a couple different things on here. And even hit you with a good ballad. But we start with Daydream, the, the title song. Definitely a top ten. One of their best songs. I love Daydream. Uh, what are you doing a daydream? Something, something for a daydreaming boy. Uh, it's just a cool, chill song, Daydream. Love that one. Um, there She Is is really good as well. It's Not Time Now. Some pretty solid, catchy stuff there. Um, jug Band Music. I really like Jug Band Music. It's more of their fun, upbeat songs. Uh, I just love the... I went to the doctor and the doctor said... You need more jug, you need more jug band music in your life or something like that. I'm not doing it right, but I love it. The whole thing is he goes to the doctor. The doctor says, you need more jug band music. <laughs> uh, it's what the doctor prescribes him anyways. It's just a really fun song. My favorite song on here, my favorite Love and Spoonful song, one of my favorite songs of the 60s is um, You Didn't Have to Be So Nice. Oh my gosh, that is so good. I love that song. In fact, it was like in my top, played songs on Spotify a couple years ago. I, I listen to that song so much. Uh, another hit song for them, though I don't feel like it's one of their big hit songs, but I believe it was a hit one. But again, it's just so nice sounding. It's a nice love pop, uh, love, uh, pop song, I guess. But again, great vocals and so catchy in the, um, you didn't have to be so nice. I would have loved you anyway. I would have thought you about once or twice. Anyways, it's super catchy, just lovely sounding. And what really makes the song is those backing vocals are so good because you don't get any backing vocals on the first verse into the chorus, and then you get into the second verse, and all of a sudden the backing vocals come in and just elevates the song of you didn't have to be so nice, so nice. I would have loved you anyway, loved you anyway. Oh, so great. The harmonies on that backing vocals. That's where I'm like, this is a good song too. This is like one of the greatest songs in my opinion. Uh, yeah, Love You Didn't Have To Be So Nice. But um, Didn't Want To Have To Do It also should have been a hit for them. It's a really great, one of my favorite songs on this album. Didn't Want To Have To Do It. Another great catchy uh, kind of pop song, I guess. Not a super fast paced, a little slower pop song, I guess, but uh, really nice sounding as well. And then Bald Headed Lena is such a fun song. Uh, talking about <laughs> Lena, who's bald head, has bald head and Lena. Has anybody seen her? Uh, uh, something about her. she's got uh, her head is full of lead or something like that, but she's all right with me. A very catchy, upbeat song, very funny. 
love this type of stuff anyway. So yeah, that's why it makes Daydream one my favorite Love and Spoonful album and here at number 71 on my list. So that's my 80 through 71. Uh, please comment what do you think about these 10 albums uh, or some of these your favorite as well. Love to hear what your thoughts are. And besides that, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for liking it. And uh, just thank you to all my subscribers for supporting the channel. I appreciate you all. I hope you have a good day.